What's up guys, Justin here with TheRealTimeEssentials.com. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the basics of using particle systems inside of Unity. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the particle system inside of Unity is basically a system designed to help you uh, simulate things like uh, liquids or clouds or fl frames by generating a bunch of different uh, objects inside of a scene. So in this video, we're gonna talk through some of the basics of creating those systems. So first thing we're gonna wanna do to add a particle system is exactly what it sounds like. We would right click on our hierarchy we would go into our effects and we want to add a particle system so when we add a particle system notice how that's going to add this system inside of unity one of the cool things about this is now when I click on it notice how it's going to automatically show me what the particles are doing so I'm gonna reset the position on this thing so we're zero 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 but let's take a quick look at what it's doing so basically what this is doing is this is emitting a number of different things inside of unity Right, so if you look at this right now, these are just little like dots of light in here. But what it's doing is from this central point, it's creating them and then it's sending them out into the 3D space like this. Now notice how you can restart this, you can stop it, or you can click on play right here. You can also check on the box to show bounds in order to show the boundary of where those particles are being um, simulated. So it's only simulating the particles inside of a certain point in the 3D space um, in order to save memory. So now let's take a look at some of the settings that you can apply to your particle system. So notice how when I click on this particle system, it's going to give me this little window on the right hand side over here. And within this, uh, within this particle system component right here, notice how there's a ton of different things that we can adjust. We're not going to be able to hit on all of these in this video, but let's go ahead and do kind of a high level. I'm just going to leave this particle system running as we go. So first off, notice how you can click on each one of these in order to expand it um, or minimize it so that you don't have just like a giant page of things to scroll through. But you can adjust like the general settings for the particle system here. So you can adjust things like the duration. So first off, you've got this option in here for the duration of the particle system. So um, it doesn't really matter right now because this is looping. If we were to turn this off and then play our particle system, what is it gonna do is it's gonna run for five seconds and then it's going to turn off. See how this stopped emitting particles um, after five. So if you leave this on looping though, then it's going to run forever. It'll just loop over and over and over again. So there's a bunch of other things in here right now we're not gonna worry too much about. So things like, uh, we can take a look at the gravity modifier though real quick. So if we add a gravity modifier, what this is going to do is it's going to actually apply gravity to our particles. So notice how now when those particles are coming out of this emitter, they're falling down. So you can use this in order to set objects that are going to fall in your space, or if you set it to zero, they're just gonna kinda like go out into space like this. Um, we're not gonna worry too much about the rest of this for right now, other than note that you can set a maximum number of particles that this is simulating in your scene at once um, in order to kind of uh, control the memory usage a little bit. All right, so now the emission settings is going to allow us to set how many things are being emitted. So this is telling us we're going to emit 10 particles per second. Well, if we were to jump this up to 100 particles per second, notice how this is going to create a lot more particles like this. So you can also adjust your rate over distance, which we're not going to worry about too much for right now. Um, the cool thing about this is you can also set up bursts. So if I just click the plus button right here, what this is going to do is now every certain interval, this is going to emit a burst of an additional however many objects, right? So notice how now I'll get a large number of objects. So it should be 30 being emitted um, over a certain amount of time or over a certain interval. So you can use this for multiple different things. So you could also set this up where you had a burst of like 100 in here as well. So notice how if I set these bursts to a different time and a different interval, then I'm gonna get multiple different bursts in here. So you can see how I'm getting a burst of 30 and a burst of 100 right here. So lots of interesting things you can do with that. But for now, let's drop this back down and let's jump into the next section, which is going to be the shape of the emitted objects. So what the shape is going to do is it's going to set the shape that this emits objects. So for example, right now we've got a cone and the cone is going to emit objects in the direction of the cone. However, if I was to set this to a sphere, for example, notice how this is going to emit things um, all the way around that sphere. So notice how now it's going in multiple different directions instead of the one direction that's in here. You can adjust the radius of the sphere as well as the thickness of the sphere 
in here as well. Those are just going to adjust what the objects are emitting from. Um, another cool thing you can do with this is you can also set this to be a mesh. So if you were to select a mesh in here, and I don't think I actually have any meshes, let's add a, let's add our own custom sphere for right now. So what you can do is within your particle system, and I'm gonna reset this position, but within your particle system, you can set a mesh. So in this case, for example, I could set a mesh. We could just search for that sphere mesh that I just added. So this one right here, notice how now this is being emitted from the mesh. And so notice how now this is emitting this from a custom mesh. So you can use your own mesh in order to do these things as well. And you can also adjust like the scale of that mesh. So like for example, if I was to tab in here and set this like this, notice how these are now going to be emitted um, based on whatever the size and current location of this is. There's a ton of other functions in here as well. We're not gonna worry too much about them right now. Align to direction is going to set whatever is emitted so that it doesn't align to your camera. It, it uh, basically aligns to whatever direction it's facing in here. But for now, let's set this to something like the donut, which is a really interesting one. You can adjust the radius set this back to something like this and we'll turn off align to direction for right now so that shape is going to give you a lot of control over how these are emitted and actually let's go back to our cone so we'll switch this back to our cone for right now. So now there's a ton of other things that you can do with this. So for example, velocity over lifetime is going to set if the object starts fast and then kind of slows down. So for example, so for example, if I adjust my Z velocity, these are gonna move faster in the Z direction. You can set the, uh, you can set the velocity over the lifetime here. You can also limit that velocity over the lifetime. So what you can do is you can adjust the damping up a little bit. So notice what the damping is going to do. Let's go ahead and set this to like 0 0.01 or something like that. Notice how these particles are now coming out fast and then they're slowing down over time. So you can use this in order to control the overall speed of your uh, particles over time. And so one thing I kind of skipped over before, which I want to get back to real quick, is notice how right now if I move this, the particles are going to move along with it, right? They're kind of like linked to this object right here. However, if we go back into our particle system settings at the very top and we set our simulation space to be world rather than local, what that's going to do is that's going to leave those objects inside of your scene um, and they're gonna be simulated as a part of the world rather than just being linked to the location of the object that's emitting them. So you can use this in order to do a lot of interesting things with actual like moving particles. You could use this to like set like smoke or something like that um, that kind of like stays moving in a direction long after the object has moved on. But then down below, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us the option for inherit velocity. And so what inherit velocity is gonna do, if we look at this top down, is notice how right now these are kind of going out in a forward direction. But if we move our object, Notice how you're getting some diagonal movement in these actual particles right here. So because you're getting that diagonal movement in here, it's because they're inheriting the velocity from the object. And you can set how strong that effect is by affecting by adjusting this value. So if I set this to 0 0.05, notice how you're gonna get more velocity applied to your particles. All right, so we're gonna run through a couple of these kind of quick, just to focus on some of the other stuff that's in here. Lifetime by emitter speed is basically going to set them up so, um, things will last longer um, depending on what the speed was of the emitter. So whatever speed this is moving is going to affect how long those last. Um, force over lifetime is going to be somewhat similar to velocity over lifetime. So it's just going to control that force and allow you to kind of like slow that down over time. Um, and now I want to take a look at color over lifetime because what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to set the color of these particles in here and we can click on the gradient editor in order to do that. So so let's say for example that we've got um, a color inside of our scene. So let's say we've got like a bright orange or a bright yellow or something like that. So let's say that we've got something where we're emitting like some sparks or something like that. We want these to be super bright in the beginning, but then in the end we want them to trans transition to kind of like a lighter red color, right? So you can kind of select the red color over here, almost as if they're like sparks or embers that are kind of like cooling off. Um, but if you look at this, notice how what it's gonna do is it's gonna take them from the beginning, from this color right here, and it's going to change the color of the objects over the lifetime. So you can use this to simulate different real world effects. 
So color by speed is going to do the same thing. It's just going to um, adjust the color based on how fast the particles are moving. So size over lifetime is another one where you can use this in order to generate things that are either smaller at the beginning or larger at the beginning and get smaller. So if I was to take this, for example, click on this little button right here and pick this other curve, notice how these objects are going to be large when they begin and then they're going to be smaller when they end. So again, you can use this for different things like sparks that the further away they get, the smaller they're going to get. So you can also adjust size by speed, um, same kind of thing. So the faster they're going, um, it's going to control the size. So if I was to adjust this particle system curve right here, notice how I can adjust this. So the size is going to be based on the speed, same as I can do color by speed up again. So rotation over lifetime and rotation speed is going to control um, angular velocity. We're not going to worry too much about that one for right now. Just notice how you can set those so that these objects are actually going to rotate inside of the 3D space. So external forces is going to allow you to control the wind zones or the external things that are affecting these. We're not going to get too far into that one for right now. Um, so noise is going to give you some kind of like randomization of these objects. So notice how you can use this in and you can set these to have a stronger noise applied to them or a smaller noise applied to them. But notice how this gives us kind of like this overall, like more random movement inside of the scene. And again, I would recommend that you kind of like play around with this a little bit, but things like frequency are also going to affect the way that noise is generated. You can actually see um, the preview of the noise, the texture over here on the right hand side of the page. All right, so collision, if you set this to world, what it's going to do is your particles are actually going to collide with things inside your model. So notice how I've got this cube in here. Um, well, these particles are actually bouncing off of this cube. So you can use this in order to set actual collision in here. There's a lot other, a lot of other things you can do with this. Like notice how, for example, you can set your bounce to be stronger, that kind of thing. But in general, this is going to allow you to calculate those collisions. So triggers is going to allow you to execute a script code based on um, if those particles are inside of a shape. We're not going to worry too much about that one for right now. So sub emitters is going to give you the ability to um, have particles emit additional particles. So um, if they like bounce off of something or something like that, you could set this where these are going to emit more things. All right, so lights is going to allow you to attach lights to your particles. So notice how here, for example, I've added a point light in here. So just a test point light. And what it's doing is it's actually um, setting these up where each one of those points are emitting light. All right, so trails is going to allow you to set this up where um, basically each one of the particles has a little trail coming off of it. So notice how it's pink right now. The reason it's pink is because inside of the renderer mode, you need to apply a material to this in order for this to work. So in this case, I'm just gonna pick like a bright orange material. We're not gonna worry too much about which one for right now, but notice how you can set things like the ratio, meaning you can set it where like 50% of these are gonna get a trail. Um, you can set these where you can adjust the width right here. So notice how if I make the width bigger, then um, it's going to make them wider, obviously. So you can use this in order to generate trails coming off of your particles as well. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about custom data at the moment. All right. And then finally, you can also, instead of generating these 2D billboards, you can actually in your render settings, set this to be a mesh like this. Then you can pick a mesh right here, and you can actually use this to generate those 3D meshes inside your scene. That gives us a lot of really interesting um, possibilities for what we can do with particles inside of Unity. Like for example, we could jump back up here and we could set this so there's a gravity modifier, right? So I could set this to like point 0.1, something like that. Notice how these are now going to fall. So for example, if I was to make this way wider and bigger and then go back into my particle system, notice how it's going to interact with that. So you can use this to do some really interesting stuff inside of Unity. So that is a super high level run through of particles in Unity. In the future, if you're interested, we can look at creating more specific effects. So um, anything from like fireworks to um, really anything that we want to create, smoke, other things like that. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you're interested in or if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.